<clears throat> Another thing that religions use are what are called hard to fake, costly signals of uh, commitment. If I tell you I'm committed to something, why would you believe me? You know that I can deceive you, okay? So how do I override your reasonable doubt about my capacity to deceive you? Hard to fake, honest signals of commitment, okay? And, you know, we do that all the time. When we spend a lot of time in the clubs we're in doing, you know, bake sales or something. We put a lot of effort in. We're showing that, you know, there's hard to fake, honest signals of commitment, which are crucial for cooperation within groups, okay? And, you know, religions use this uh, uh, tremendously, okay? They're hard to fake, honest signals of uh, commitment. Uh, moral feeling system. And uh, religions claim that without them, uh, we have no morality. That is simply wrong. Moral intuitions are part of our brain. Moral intuitions start to come online when we're still infants. And there's fascinating research that even very young children, preschoolers, have clear intuitions about um, wrong, unfairness, people being hurt, reparation being needed. We have moral, intuitive, reasoning capacities that are embedded in our brain that come online when we're a child. And you can see how, basically, religions um, hijack that. Uh, this is a way, I think, of, of looking at morality and religion. Uh, morality is doing what's right, regardless of what you're told. But a lot of religious morality um, is doing what you were told, uh, no matter whether or not it's right. If you look at the biographies of the men who flew those planes into um, the, the towers, particularly uh, Zia Jarrett, the pilot of the plane that went down in Pennsylvania, absolutely lovely guy. I mean, you'd want him to marry your daughter. Um, and, you know, basically good people whose brains have been hijacked. Um, we have a capacity for altruistic punishment. And you can see where this would be crucial to group living. We're willing to punish social cheats at a potential cost to ourselves, all of us. And if you think about it, I mean, you probably thought about where you have done that. And you can see how uh, religions uh, can use that. Again, that's one more mechanism that probably went into the suicide terrorists of 9-11 and the current ones. Ken psychology. All of us have mechanisms in our head that are dedicated to identifying kin and non-kin. Okay. Um, and you can see how religions utilize this. I mean, just think about it. I mean, you know, priests are the brothers, nuns are the sisters, Pope is the Holy Father. There's constant evocation of pseudo-kinship terms in all religion. If you look at the if you look at male suicide bombers, they're recruited and they're constantly talked about their brother Muslims. Okay. Pseudo-kinship terms are constantly used in religion. Now, I want to take just a little bit of a deviation here, but just to show you something that's fascinating. Religions are man-made. They come out of human minds. But even more interesting is that they are influenced. Theology is basically designed by ecology. You can show when you go across the world that there are basically two kinds of religions, rainforest religions and desert religions. And in the rainforest religions, they're usually polytheistic, multiple gods. Think of the richness of a rainforest. The gods are much less interventionist because, um, you know, there's fewer drastic controls over your life. Uh, women are more equal, and they tend to be less repressive. Desert religions, and what are the three monotheistic religions that basically govern the world? They derive from the desert. They're monotheistic. Interventionist gods that are powerful and control a lot of uh, they're very hierarchical. There's a lot of military-like hierarchy in desert uh, religions. Uh, women are inferiors, um, and they tend to be repressive. 